Let's talk a little bit more about headings in HTML because we actually have one heading in there, but I want to look a little bit closer at headings because they are kind of important to how we do our SEO. So in this lesson, we're going to add our headings and a couple of span elements to our page itself. Headings are available from H1 to H6, with H1s being the largest headings that display the largest and H6 being the smallest that display the smallest. And keep in mind, they also have priority inside of HTML. H1 has the highest priority heading, H6 has the lowest priority heading. Headings are used to bring attention to areas of our page and they're also used inside SEO as it looks through your website and crawls it to determine the importance of your content. Following proper HTML structuring rules, there should only be one H1 heading per page. We talked about that earlier. Don't forget, that's very important because you will be penalized by the search engines if you have more than one. We're also going to cover span elements in this tag or in this lesson, which allows us to actually group inline elements so we, can, so we can actually style them and do some different things to them inside their own tags. And you're going to see that as we work through the lesson. So let's go in and continue work on our homepage and go ahead and ramp up the HTML section of the series. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of the presentation, get into our development environment, and we're picking up exactly where we left off after the last exercise. But what I want to do now is I want to look at a little bit closer at headings. So we discussed headings in the introduction to the tutorial. Now let's add a few to our articles. First, we're going to add an article tag. And what exactly is an article tag? Well, according to the HTML spec, the article tag specifies independent self-contained content. An article should make sense on its own and it should be possible to distribute it independently from the rest of your site. There's been a lot of confusion as to how the article tag works inside HTML because the article tag is new to HTML5. Potential ways that I use the article tag when I'm designing not only my own sites but for my customers. A forum post is a perfect example of a good article tag because everything inside that post should pertain to that particular post heading. A blog post, another good idea for an article tag, another good place for article tags to be used. A news story. As long as the content all pertains to that particular title, it's a good place for an article. Article tags help identify your content for SEO. It's a new tag, again, added in HTML5 and is used to properly structure your text document. A semantic element clearly describes its meaning to both the browser and the developer. Okay? So, let's add an article tag to our first P tag because that's going to be our first article. We're actually going to have two inside this particular document. So, my first paragraph is one article. I'm going to come right down below my closing paragraph tag and close that article. Then I'm going to come right above or right below that closing article tag and add another article tag. And that's going to be the closing article tag for my second article. So I'm going to come down right below that, open my article tag, come right below that closing P tag and close that article tag. So our page has two articles now that make up this particular page. I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. Good time for you to pause. Go ahead and enclose your paragraphs in article tags. If I refresh my browser window, you should see no semantic difference at all to the layout. Article tags do not have any default styling. They just enclose content. It is highly recommended for SEO that you use article tags to define your content. So now let's add an H3 heading. My first article, even though I'm using lorem ipsum text, is going to pertain to the importance of CSS in designing our websites. And I'm actually going to go ahead and indent these two now, that H3 and the paragraph tag, just because that's good formatting. That's the way we should properly format our documents. It has no basis of no impact at all as to how it's displayed. It just makes it easier for us as developers to read, to see everything formatted correctly. And my second article is going to be proper page structure. So I'm actually going to put an H3 heading in that particular article. So I'm going to come down right below my opening article tag for the second article and put an H3 in there also and then I'm going to indent those also using my text editor. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes. Now if we refresh our browser window, by the way it's a great time for you to pause if you need to type in those two H3 headings. I'm going to refresh the browser window and now you'll see that we've got two headings for our two articles. The page is ugly as all get out. I understand that. We have not done any styling yet 
but this is how we properly structure an HTML page. We're getting all the content in, then we're going to go back and we're actually going to structure the page. Next thing I want to do is I want you to look at a span element because span elements are used a lot in HTML and I want you to see how we use them. All right, so we're right where we left off. We're looking at our document. We've got our H3s in there. We've got our paragraphs in there. We've got our article tags. Things are starting to look very well formatted inside the HTML document itself. Again, I understand it looks very ugly in our browser, but we will fix that as we work through the CSS section of the tutorial. I talked about span elements during the presentation. The span tags used to group inline elements in a document. The span tag provides no visual change by itself. So if I stick a bunch of span tags inside of our paragraphs, which, we're, which is what we're going to do, in our browser window, you'll never know they're there. The, but the span tag does provide a way to have a hook to that portion of the text, as you're going to see when we get into the CSS. So what do we mean by a hook? It's a way to have that part of the text stand out so that it can be styled individually. If I wanted to do something with this particular sentence inside here, inside my paragraph, I could use a span element to do that. And that's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and add an opening span tag. And again, you'll notice we're using that less than sign. Then I put span, the greater than sign. And I'm going to come down to where that sentence ends, and I'm going to close that span tag. So that gives me a hook to that particular sentence. And I want to do the same thing with another sentence. So I'm going to do an opening span, and then I'm going to come down to where that ends or where I want my span to end, and I'm going to close that span. So now I've got an opening span tag and a closing span tag for that particular sentence. And now what I want to do is I'm going to come down to my second paragraph and do the same thing, but I'm just going to do it a little bit differently. I'm actually going to group it more than just a sentence. I'm going to group a group of sentences. And again, I put the opening span tag, then I go to where I want this hook to end and put that closing span tag. Spans are used very, very frequently inside of our HTML documents because it does give us a way to individually style groups of text or an individual word or one letter, whatever we're looking to style, it gives us a hook to that particular part of the document. And you'll see when we get into the CSS section, how we use them inside of our styling. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. Go ahead and put a couple of span elements into your paragraphs. Don't forget you'll need an opening span tag and a closing span tag for each one. You want to make sure you got opening and closing. Make sure they're closed correctly with that forward slash. If we go and refresh our browser window, first make certain everything is saved. Let's go ahead and refresh our browser window. You'll notice we've got no change in our paragraphs, and that's exactly the way it should be because span elements by default have no impact on your page itself. Until we actually put something to that element, they'll have no impact on the page itself. So now we've got a very well structured HTML document. If you look in your browser window, you've got our UL, our unordered list at the top, which will become our navigation. We've got our main title for the site. We have a couple images. We've got a couple paragraphs with some headings. And we've got our footer section, which is going to give us a way to actually link our footer to our navigation system inside the web page. So when we start the next section, we're actually going to start the styling section where we can actually style this and make it look a whole lot better than it looks right now. So I hope you're enjoying it. Don't forget you can download this tutorial series free on ontargethtml5.com if you're watching this on YouTube. With that download, you'll get all the exercise files that we have. So I look forward to seeing you in the next, next section of the tutorial. Mike needs to learn how to talk today.